Hi, friends. Uh, today we have uh, Liana Sahir who is joining us. Uh, thank you, Liana, for taking the time. And uh, most importantly, uh, I'm 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 excited to listen to your side of the story on your preparation and your exam strategy. Thank you for calling me here, sir. Okay, cool. So uh, I believe uh, again, uh, just to give a mention here, uh, I really loved your blog. Uh, it is uh, lianasahir.in. Very interesting blog uh, from a societal perspective, also women in tech perspective. So I really liked reading. Uh, I read a couple of the most recent blogs, enjoyed it thoroughly. So yeah. all the women uh, who are planning to have a career in tech uh, and also social work, uh, please, uh, it, it's a great blog. I would recommend that. Thanks for the shout out, sir. I usually write it as a hobby and I've not been keeping up because of date preparations, but I'll have to get back to it soon. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, one blog a month is still a very good run rate, uh, especially given the hectic schedule you have. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. Cool, cool. So uh, I just to give some background, uh, uh, again, I would want you to give uh, your background itself. But uh, from the course perspective, I believe you enrolled in September 2019 for a two-year course. Mm -hmm. But most likely, you will not need the two years because uh, hopefully, you'll, uh, uh, hopefully uh, you would crack it. Uh, I just want to understand your academic background especially your undergraduate degree. I believe you're from the Government Engineering College, Kanur. So what yes. can you give us a brief about your background? I believe you're a 2020 graduate, but then COVID disturbed all the plans. So how do you prepare for GATE? Can you give us some of the background, please? All right. So uh, I joined Computer Science Engineering because that was the only thing on my mind. So uh, and I joined specifically in GC Kanur because it, it was close to my home. So, it's also a very good engineering college. I have I have uh, I have batchmates and friends from the same college who studied with me and worked with me earlier. Oh, okay. So yeah, so the my undergrad years were fine, but I was also very uh, having a lot of fun in college. But my uh, grades were good. I I got I had a nine point uh, CGPA SGPA, and uh, overall it was fine. But uh, yeah, uh, I wasn't very uh, serious about attempting gate while I was in college. So towards the final year, I was like, okay, um, I am serious about going for higher education. So this is something I should be paying more attention to. And that was around the same time that I enrolled for a uh, gate applied course. So I searched online, I watched a few of your videos. I really liked the way uh, you were teaching the, the logical flow of concepts and all that, and I enrolled. Uh, I think before I attempted GATE 2020, I went through a few videos on uh, C programming and data structures, I think. Uh, but I didn't have the time to go through the rest because project work was pending and then um, semester exams were happening. And then I got into this mindset that anyway, you'll not be able to finish the whole thing. So what's the point in uh, you know wasting your time on this right now? You can, uh, anyway, I was planning also to take a gap year because I really wanted to take a gap year considering how hectic the four years in college where so I was like okay you need to really think about what you want before uh, going forward because I, lo I loved engineering I loved computer science but then I also had this idea of should I you know go into project management or something outside India engineering management courses or something like that so I took one year off um, my day 2020 was okay-ish I got around 48 marks uh, something around like 2,111 rank. So um, I took a year off and then I tried a few internships. Um, I worked with a bunch of uh, people. And then towards the uh, last- I believe months, you work uh, for an NGO, right? For a nonprofit, uh, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, around that time I was working for uh, Rethink Foundation. So that was going on. And then um, I was looking into videos, maybe like one or two hours per day. But then towards the last three months, I decided that if I really want to crack this, I need to put my full attention here. And then for the last three months, it was your videos okay. and mock tests and all that. Cool. Very interesting. So uh, I also wanted to understand, did you get set one or set two? Set two. Ah, set that's good. Two. That's good. So I wanted to understand as somebody who is probably not expecting a very hard paper or a very lengthy paper, I wouldn't call it hard. I would call it tricky and lengthy. Because hard can be made, you can have a shorter questions, but very hard questions. So how, how did you tackle the pressure at the time of examination? Did you panic? How did you come out of it? Can you just elaborate a little on that? Uh, that's actually a really uh, interesting thing that happened. So what happened was I actually attempted a few questions in the very question papers in the very last uh, few days of exams. 
So uh, I know everyone keeps saying you shouldn't do that because then you will get a very low morale and you'll be like, I'm going to you know flood the paper and all that. But what happened was in the last week when I attempted those papers, I had this feeling like uh, the paper is going to be really tough and you need to uh, adjust your mindset. Because what I found when, when I was taking the mock, mock test was I was panicking in the first few minutes when I'm not able to get it properly. I was panicking. Even in the mock tests? Yeah. Oh, okay. Initial, okay. Initially, I was doing very well in the mock test. But in the last few mock tests, when I realized I wasn't uh, doing well enough, I started panicking. And then I realized what I should be controlling is my panic. Because when I went back and looked at the answers, I was able to get them correctly when I thought about it properly. So um, during the actual exam, what happened is during the first one hour, uh, I realized that the pattern was kind slightly different. The way of asking question was slightly different. But the concepts were everything that we already studied. So uh, what happened is because it was kind of different, um, I used to solve the answer. And then I went back and you know read through the question again, and then, and, and then I was resolving it. But then, because I wasn't sure if that's what they asked, or you know, is it supposed to be this simple? Because some questions were simple, the questions were lengthy, but then when you end up doing that answer, it, it was simple. And then I was yeah. like, this, no, this is not supposed to be like this. And then I, you know, went and rechecked and you know ensured that I got this right. But then I realized that after the one hour mark, that I was wasting a lot of time doing this by you know, uh, double checking my answers and questioning myself and all that. So I was like, for the next two hours, you're going to solve everything. You're going to read pro properly and then solve it and then leave it there. And then you can come back when there is a time and check it again. Okay. So, so while you were double checking early on, you said, this is wasting time. Let's, let's yes. do it thoroughly the first time itself. Yeah. But did you panic uh, or was it, I mean, you could handle it very easily because that's a very important uh, mindset to develop, especially if there is a hard paper in front of you. Um, I was panicking before the exam, but then once I started and once I started solving and putting the answers there, I was like, I'll finish this and then let's see what happens after that. Okay. So, so what, yeah, what happened was when I was solving, I also, when I read the questions first, some of them I couldn't uh, uh, understand how should I go about doing this. So I left them and there were a lot of red marks on the side by the time I reached the end. But then when I went back, like after the whole first initial pressure was over and I went back to those questions, I realized, okay, this is not that hard. Very so, nice. Very interesting. So you, you kept your cool uh, because we have seen so many students, including myself when I was a student, I panicked with the hard paper. I really panicked and I messed up. It took me almost half the examination to revert back and say, this was in 2006, to revert back and say, okay, this is a hard paper. Nobody can score good marks in this. Let's just do our best. So I think that reset is required somewhere in the first one hour to be able to tackle slightly harder papers, unexpectedly hard papers. Cool. Uh, uh, another thing I wanted to learn is uh, 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 your whole BTEC got slightly delayed because of COVID, right? You're a 2020 graduate, but I believe by the time you finished, I read this on your blog, uh, probably in October or so, I think you finished your uh, bachelor's. So how did you balance the learning for gate along with some of the havoc that's that's that, that, that was happening all around us especially in the last few months okay so um to be honest i was going through around like um i think it was around september time that i started watching videos so um because of the delay due to covid uh, another thing that happened was that there was a lot of time at home as well so uh, even though the exams got delayed, the longer it was being delayed, the more the people were being very chill about exams as well, because it's like there's a lot of time and all that. But in terms of gate preparation, I, uh, to be very honest, I didn't start going into the uh, very serious mode until um, say end of October, November. So it was around end of October, I started putting in around roughly say five hours per day, and, and so on. So November, December, I was completely in, in that mode. Um, few hours, of course, under content every day. And then uh, I tried to give a mock test uh, every day for December, I think. Not every day, but at least consecutive days or, you know, uh, something like that. So I don't, I, I don't think COVID impacted my preparation much because anyway, I was planning to be at home and- Cool, cool. Uh, it actually gave you more time to prepare and learn. So cool. Yeah. Also, I think you started your preparation slightly later than many other students, but then you did much more thoroughly by putting in like long hours and 
thorough time into it yeah towards the last month i kind of did that and i think because my uh, during my btech um i wasn't very focused on all the subjects but uh, the gate subjects for some reason i found them interesting enough so i did pay attention while in college ah, so that so, that that always helps so if you do your btech during your btech days if you study the subjects properly gate is a cake walk uh, for sure so i also want to understand what suggestions would you give to students who are very similar to you in your own shoes uh, who are preparing their gate preparation uh, uh, probably in their final year so how do you suggest them because you said when you prepared for gate 2020 Uh, you couldn't balance the time with your college work and things like that but for gate 2021 since the exams were delayed covid gave you ample time you had time so given these two experiences that you had in 2020 and 2021 what would you recommend somebody who is probably in the btech final year who is planning to take gate this year what are your suggestions for tackling the course that we have practicing what are your what, what do you think you would redo if you were in the same shoes again that's a really nice thing to think about sir because actually when i told you like the preparation during uh, my first time the 2020 attempt so i think uh, rather than not being having enough hours you know being able to put in enough hours i think the larger factor at play was that i didn't have confidence so oh. uh, so i was like even if i put in the hours and then what will i be able to complete everything and then will i be able to you know for some reason i had this very negative mindset and i think that uh, affected the amount of effort i was willing to put into at that point of time so i think uh, what i would have done differently is 6 uh, months before gate i think that would have been an ideal time because we also had the last 2 months of break before the next semester was beginning i think around june something so maybe that would have been an ideal time to start and i think um, alongside doing the videos and then just trusting yourself and Yes, uh, that's know, very meaning in that process because um, I watched a lot of your videos and I remember there was one of uh, one of those videos where uh, you said about you know uh, after finishing this topic you need to uh, do the subject test and then a uh, few months after that couple them together and then do the you know the whole process of and then also the uh, matter of repetitive uh, memorization and all those things so I think the whole thing is there and the only thing left is for you know trusting yourself and being able to uh, see it through till the end very very important so we see a lot of students actually uh, who are serious about gate start somewhere in june july put in consistently 2 to 3 hours and uh, of course there are so many ups and downs because one exam one subject test you don't do well that will say hey ye nahi hoga yaar mujhse this is not going to happen with me i mean i'm not going to crack it so there are all that emotional ups and downs that we also have to balance and keep the long term trust in yourself like at the end of the day if you don't like we have seen brilliant students who uh, who are slightly lacking on the self trust issue so the moment they do they get a few questions wrong in a mock test or in a subject test they would immediately say hey i'm losing my confidence come on dude you have done like so many other subject tests so well it's okay nobody can be perfect in all subjects even i can't solve all sorts of problems well i fumble like all of us do right yeah. so that's and a I very think, nice point and i think one other reason that keeps us from you know continuously uh, what like uh, in the in the mode of preparation is once you start watching videos and uh, you know you're continuously watching videos you start to get tired because it's like oh i've watched 5 hours of content and the subject is still not over <laughs> so uh, i think uh, one other reason that and also one of the reason that i would really uh, you know suggest applied post to anyone is because i remember in certain chapters uh, uh, you kind of go into the back story not too much maybe like just just a quick one or two sentences but then it will catch my attention for example i remember when we were uh, when you were teaching about spanning tree pot protocol so you mentioned about uh, radia perlman and that she uh, you know invented it in like 7 days and i was like wow in 7 days and then i went and searched the back story of that so i found the back story and also it was fun to me because sometimes we see these things as very theoretical and very you know uh, kind of boring certain subjects not all of them but then you, when you see people who were very passionate about those things then you start thinking okay they, these people were passionate about those things means there is something very interesting in them and when you start looking at it in that perspective you see the fun in that so i remember even in terms of uh, something related to jaitstra but i can't remember exactly what it was 
but then i went and read a book extra was a physicist yeah uh, yeah who then moved on to computer science and did some exactly. you know better better if they really want to get into a masters program in a top university um i think uh no i don't think you missed out on any like even if uh, we missed out on something in this call it has all all been covered in some video or the other sure. i think the importance of mock tests is like something uh, really huge for example i remember when i was doing mock tests and some of the answers were you know was like i don't remember this being in the course video or something because it's very small and then uh, when i think about it yeah it is there it is actually mentioned somewhere or the other uh, and then uh, i used to make have this mistake copy and all that so when i went back in the last few days to the mistake copy i saw some of the answers that i had highlighted because it was there in the um, in the you know question paper and all that so i was thinking okay this is not going to be important and all that but then uh, some things like for example uh, the what was it the ordering the big indian and little indian okay uh, okay thing there was one small question there and i was like uh, this is not going to be important but then we had a huge question on that <laughs> no no you cannot skip anything yeah. because yeah. any small snippet of thing can come in the exam and i think that was uh, i came to, i mean i focused on that particular part only because of one of the tests okay so okay. little small things like that very nice. i'm very happy that you also maintained a uh, errors notes or a mistakes notes because that is super helpful for the last minute revisions to avoid those mistakes at least not to repeat the same mistake doing once is okay doing the same thing three four times is really bad so cool mm -hmm. so uh, uh, thank you liana and uh, thank you for sharing your journey and your experiences i'm sure they'll surely be very helpful for many other students uh, who will come after you uh, in who will follow in the same footsteps in your journey thank you very much thank you for giving me